Hey, what's going on guys? You may or may not know from my previous videos that I have a 60 watt laser cutter. I've had this machine for about three or four years now and it still runs great, but I needed something with a little bit more power that could cut through thicker material. So I got online and ordered a 100 watt. This machine is made by Omtech. I've read really good reviews online, so I decided to give them a go. They also include this chiller. It's kind of like a two in one thing, so that's another reason I went with them. It's just less of a hassle that I have to deal with. I really like this chiller. It's a CW5000. It looks really nice. I like the color. I'm pretty much going to give you guys a first impression video, a review. We're going to check out some of the newer features that these things supposedly have. So let's dive into it. I got the machine out of the wooden crate and this is how it looks. It's got the Ruida controller on it and it's got this key that turns the power supply on and off which fires the laser. And in the back of the machine, in this little cabinet here, we will find the laser tube. These little latches just come out like this and then you turn it and then you can pick up the cabinet and then here's the tube. Luckily, everything was really tight, sealed up pretty good. There was no leakage. I know that a common issue is that sometimes these things show up broken because they are glass. Obviously, that happens, but luckily, I did not have that issue with this machine. One thing I was very happy about is that I don't have to hook up an exhaust fan to this hose because the exhaust fan is built into the machine now. My previous machine did not have that. I have to hook up an exhaust fan to it. And also, right there is an air assist that is also built in. So I don't have to have a separate air pump hooked up to this thing. And in case you're wondering what that air assist is meant for, uh, it shoots air out of the laser head and prevents the wood from catching on fire and burning and so forth. You can open up this cabinet, see the power supply the other gadgets in here. Definitely not gonna mess with anything here. I connected this ground cable that I picked up on Amazon. It actually goes out to my flower bed. The ground cables just come out here under my garage door and I've got them staked into the ground right here under these rocks. I put this mat here so no one trips on the cables and so that they're not moving around. And this here is my exhaust for the machine itself. You probably can't tell here, but there is a little bit of a slant on the ground in my garage here. It's uh, it's like that just in case some water comes up here and it floods, it can kind of, you know, fall back down that way. So it's not entirely level, but these little legs on the machine, uh, they have threads and they can basically screw up and down. So I was able to level the machine, which is pretty cool. I was also a bit fortunate because on a lot of machines, when they first come in, you have to realign your mirrors, you have to adjust your red dot, and a lot of things like that. And I didn't have to do any of that. It was all done for me. Sometimes, even if it is done for you uh, along the way, during shipment, it can kind of get thrown off as well. But lucky for me, I did not have that issue. So the only issue I've had so far on this machine is this little sensor it knows if the door is shut or not. And by default, the machine doesn't want to fire if the door is open. So I shut the door, it's closed. I turn the machine on, it still won't fire. It still thinks that the door is open. I was getting a message on the controller. So after digging around online, I found a YouTube video that actually showed me how to turn off the closed door protection feature in Lightburn. And yes, that does mean I disabled a safety feature of this machine, but I had to do it in order to use the machine. I wouldn't recommend doing it, but the option is there. And of course, that doesn't mean you have to run the machine with the door open. You can still shut the door, which I will always do. It's just that sensor is not going to know. On a lot of these older machines, there is a light on the back right there. But on this one, they actually put it right here on the rail with the laser head. I also really like that this thing is only about 20 inches tall from the ground to the Omtec logo. It's like the same as my knee. 
It's really, really short. It's really easy to get in here and work comfortably and reach back there if you need to. Back here, you can see the exhaust fan. Um, it's just mounted on the wall right there of the machine. The thing is very small. It doesn't take up any space. Pretend that this CW5000 chiller came with the machine. That was another convenient part of this purchase is uh, getting two in one. The chiller is also Omtec. I've already got that filled up with distilled water and hooked up. And I kept the user manual here just in case. Why not? I've pretty much covered everything I can think of over this machine without actually turning it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up and I'm gonna fill my very first order with it. So I'm just going to take this little piece of acrylic that came with the machine and set the focus. This is the design my customer asked for. She wanted two of these. And now I'm just going to do a frame test to make sure the laser head stays on top of the wood. focus is set and the frame test was good so I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid and hit start but first thing we have to do is turn on the laser itself that basically just turns on the power supply which fires the laser so now we're good to go Laser's doing its thing it's kind of hard to see through this dark glass but it's cool I'll probably just update you guys once it's done So far, so good. It's actually showing me the progress on the Ruida. Yeah, a little bit more than halfway. Looks like it's all done, so. Looks good. Now we just need to see how easy all the little pieces fall out. I had my power on 90 and my speed on 10 millimeters per second. For the most part, it looks like all these little pieces just fall right out. I might have to work with it a little bit, but it should be pretty easy. I'm not sure if you noticed or not there, but these little markings here aren't supposed to show up. I didn't notice them when I was doing this, but this was due to the laser hitting the side of the nozzle. It just took a little minor adjustment. It was only happening on the front right corner of the work area, and all my smaller test pieces that I did before this one were at the back left corner so i didn't see it or notice it it didn't even happen in that area another thing i'd like to throw in here is that this fan just really didn't cut it um, it does blow pretty good and it does take some of the smoke with it but i had a lot of smoke in my garage more than i need so i'm gonna have to figure out another way to make this uh stronger I'm not sure how bad it would be if your machine was just on engrave mode, but on cut mode, um, it just really wasn't good enough. Alright guys, so I have officially cut out my first order with my new machine, and I went ahead and filled some other orders, smaller stuff, while it was on. And uh, so now I will just wrap this up in some plastic wrap and send it on its way. This is pretty much how I ship everything out. I wrap it up in plastic. I throw my card in there and uh, yeah. These right here will go in a bubble mailer and then I'll wrap this up in some cardboard so it's protected. And there you have it guys. That pretty much sums it up for my new machine so far. I'm sure there's still some learning to do. If I missed anything, I didn't cover anything, or if you have any tips that could help me out, drop a comment. I would really appreciate it. And until the next one, that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, guys.